How can we decode what's going on in someone's mental state? This gets into a distinction between two related concepts, encoding and decoding. With encoding, it's a much more straightforward process of eliciting some kind of mental state or cognitive process through an experimental design. And then we pick up some kind of measured brain activity, for example, through an MRI scanner. With decoding, on the other hand, we're presented with an overall brain map of activation, and then we try to make some kind of inference about what the subject was doing or thinking at that time. For example, we can do this in Neurosynth, which we've covered in an earlier video. On the Neurosynth homepage, there's a decoder button at the very top of the screen. Click on it, and you will be presented with an option to upload your own image or to click on a link to generate a meta-analysis map for an example. Let's click on the Here button and see an example map generated by Neurosynth. And you can see in this image, there's a high degree of activity in let's say the premotor or supplementary premotor areas along with parts of the intraparietal sulcus. And some decreases in activity in places like the lateral prefrontal cortex. If you scroll down, you'll see a list of term similarities or the amount of correlation of different meta-analysis maps in the Neurosynth database, such as different cortical areas, premotor and motor, and different conceptual terms such as execution. If you click on the arrow button next to, say, premotor, this will overlay the meta-analysis map for the premotor term, which includes a high degree of active voxels in places like the premotor area, for example, and intraparietal sulcus. You can adjust the opacity to see how well the positive voxels overlap with the positive voxels for the landmark response control map. And we can do the same process with the execution meta-analysis map. Instead of using the meta-analysis maps in Neurosynth, we can use collections from an associated website called neurovault.org. Instead of meta-analyses, these are collections of group analysis or single subject analysis maps uploaded by individual researchers. We could, for example, search for a term like pain and then select any of the results that are returned. In this case, let's select the first one, two brain systems for pain avoidance learning. Within this, you see a series of different group level activation maps, T maps to be specific. Let's click on the first one, received compared to avoided pain. This will display a group level map for that contrast, which shows a high degree of activation in the dorsal anterior cingulate and bilateral anterior insula, a common pattern that's seen in response to painful stimuli. If we want to analyze this using Neurosense decoder, Click on Analysis, and then Cognitive Decoding Neurosynth. This will take you back to the Neurosynth page with that specific contrast loaded. You can toggle the opacity to see exactly where the activation lies on this template brain. If we scroll down, as before, you see a list of different meta-analysis terms that have the highest degree of correlation and overlap with that image. Not surprisingly, pain has the highest correlation with that received versus avoided pain contrast. And you can select other ones as well, such as insula, to see where that meta-analysis map shows the highest amount of correlation with that map we loaded from NeuroVault. The last method we're going to cover is uploading our own image. And to do this, we're going to go back to NeuroVault.org and click on Get Started Using Your Own Image. If you don't have an account, you can register one here. In my case, I already have one, so I'm going to log in with my credentials. Because this is a data set I downloaded from openneuro.org and I'm not going to publish it, I'm going to make the accessibility private because this is for demonstration purposes only. I will then give this collection a name, such as flanker inc minus con. Then I click on save. Notice I'm only filling in the required fields. On the next screen, I'm going to select add images one by one. 
because in this case, I only have a single TMAP group image. And here, everything with an asterisk needs to be filled in, such as the name, let's say ink minus con. The map type is a TMAP, modality is fMRI bold, and for the target template, we'll select human generic unknown MNI. For the cognitive atlas paradigm, there are many different ones you can select from. In the search field, I type flanker and select Ericsson flanker task. Under cognitive atlas contrast, these are default ones loaded from that specific atlas paradigm. I could select other if I wanted a custom label, but in this case, incongruent minus congruent correct most closely approximates what went into this group level analysis. So I'll click on that one. We then select the unthresholded volume map by clicking on the browse button. And in my case, this is a folder on my desktop directory, which is labeled second level ink minus con. And within that directory, I select the spmt0001.nii file. There are many other options that you should fill in if this is for a published study and you want to include as many details as possible. For now, I'm just gonna fill in the rest of the required fields, such as group level analysis and the number of subjects, which is 26. I'm going to skip the rest of them, such as age, gender, handedness, and so on, and just click on submit. This will load your image in the Papaya Viewer, just like we saw with the other NeuroVault images. And here you can see that I have effects in the pre-SMA area. Now I'm going to click on Analysis, Cognitive Decoding, Neurosynth, which again takes me to the Neurosynth page with this contrast file uploaded. Now as before, I can toggle the opacity, see where exactly on the template brain my effects are, and then scroll down to the Term Similarity region. In this case, the highest correlation map is the meta-analysis term intraparietal. And if I load that, you can see that there is a high degree of correlation, especially in the intraparietal areas, which is probably why that search term has the highest degree of correlation with the map that I uploaded. If I scroll back down to the term similarity options, in the search box, I could look for a term such as flanker, which actually is not in the meta-analysis database, or something related like conflict which has a lower degree of correlation. But you can see that this region in the more medial prefrontal area has some higher correlation with that pre-SMA cluster in my group level analysis. Now you have the tools to do neural decoding using maps from the Neurosynth database, as well as maps from another associated neural repository called NeuroVault, and uploading your own images if you wanna see what kind of maps and meta-analyses correlate with your data. This broader topic of reverse inference is an important one and a complicated one, which we'll cover in more depth in the next video.